Oh, hey guys. I'm Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today we're talking about nerve damage or nerve back damage in the dog. Nerve damage in the dog is really common, and we see it predominantly in your chondrodystrophic breeds. That includes like your dachshunds and your Frenchies, French bulldogs. You know, these doggies are more prone to back issues. We're looking at the doggie, and we're going to see a couple of things. I'm going to use four major things for to work myself into a diagnosis of a spinal cord issue and to assess how serious it is. There are other tests you can do, but I'm going to work on these four. So the spinal cord, the way I tend to think about it is it's like an onion. And the deeper you go into the onion, the more damage you have. And there's different layers of the onion that assess how damaged the spinal cord is. So when you have a dog's spinal cord and the cords go up to the head right here, let's say the tail's back here and the cords right here, if you have compression, it's going to affect the legs that are downstream from it, right? Just like humans. So if we have damage to the cord between the front and back legs, that's going to damage the back legs because we're not innervating the back legs anymore. If we have damage in the cervical region, in front of or the neck region, we'll say, a cranial or in front of the front legs, you can have damage to both the front and the back legs. The most common problem with back issues happens at the thoracolumbar region, which is between the front and back legs. That's why most dogs, when they have back issues, it's the back legs that aren't working very well. The first test we're going to do is proprioception placing. This is to check and see if the spinal cord is damaged at all. This test tests for the most superficial damage. It's kind of like if you have any compression to the outside of the spinal cord, just the, the really superficial aspect of it, any kind of pressure or trauma to that. If that happens, the doggy may lose proprioception. Proprioception is the ability to feel your arms or legs in space. So I can extend out and touch my nose without even thinking about it. If a dog has proprioception damage, we're gonna miss. I think I'm touching my nose, but I'm missing touching my cheek. With a dog, we will take the back feet and turn them upside down. If they can correct their feet from when I place it upside down, that means they pass a test. They have proprioception. In that case, there is no superficial damage to the spinal cord. But if you turn the feet upside down, and see the left ones get corrected really fast, but the right one sits there, that's a problem. With these doggies that have proprioception damage, they tend to crisscross their feet a lot because again, they're walking, but they don't know where their feet are in space. That's number one. If we go deeper and we have more damage, that will affect motor. Motor is the second layer of damage. Motor allows a dog to walk. So if a doggy can't reposition, proprioception, gone, if they can't walk, so they're dragging their back legs, that's a pretty obvious one. Now sometimes they can, they can try to throw a leg up by like throwing their hip or something, but if we are just dragging those back legs, I'm calling it no motor. The third is superficial pain. All we're going to do is pinch or press on the toe. If the doggy pulls the leg back, that does not count. That's a reflex. It's a reflex loop. Reflex loops do not go to the brain. So when you press on the dog's toe, if they pull it back really quick, that's a reflex. That means the loop works for the leg, but what I want is a response. Big difference between a response and a reflex. If I press on the toe and the dog looks back at me, and maybe they growl or they bark or they complain. At least look back at me. That's great. That's a response. That tells me the dog's acknowledging that hurts. My leg's there. Thank you. Number four, and this one should all be done by a veterinarian. The veterinarian will use some kind of tool to put pressure on the toe. Deep pain is the final sensation we're looking for for a response. When a veterinarian applies a tool to check for deep pain, if the dog looks back or cries or bark, tries to bite, any, any kind of response is great. If we have lost deep pain, we are in a ton, a ton of trouble.
going into your veterinarian, have them look over your doggy for neurologic function is important. But if you're at home and like this just happens, if you are looking at your doggy and you're like, do we have proprioception? Can we place our feet? Are we dragging our legs? Can you feel me if I touch your foot? All of this can give you an idea of, is it neurologic and how serious it is? Yeah, of course. you got to go into your vet. They're going to tell you what to do, what meds to take. Do we need surgery? They're going to lay it all out for you. But just by testing, the nerves in the back legs can give you a much, much, much better idea of if it's neurologic and how serious is this. Any, any back issue should be seen right away. The quicker you move, the quicker you medicate, the quicker you do surgery on the back, the better chance you have for resolution or improvement. All right, guys, I hope this was super helpful. If this comment has benefited you, if you feel more knowledgeable, go ahead and like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And comment below. Tell me something about your doggy or your experiences that could be beneficial for somebody else. Or I'd love to hear about it. I'll love to write back. Take care, everybody. Have a great week.